flat earthers keep on going about the curved adjacency in the context of the sextant. So I decided to make this video showing how measuring the elevation angle with a sextant really works. Say we have an observer on a boat somewhere on the ocean. This red dot will represent the observer. Say he's looking at some star and wants to measure its elevation angle. So this is his line of sight to the star. It might surprise you that I didn't draw it as a straight line. There is a reason for that. The line of sight is curved because of refraction. Refraction in the atmosphere bends the light down slightly, so the rays of light our eyes or cameras are receiving are really curved. The other thing the observer sees is the horizon. This one is also curved due to refraction, which is why the horizon the observer sees, called the apparent horizon, is slightly higher and slightly further than the purely geometrical calculations would indicate. But this isn't really important here. So, we have two curved rays of light. We take a sextant and we attempt to measure the angle between them. Can that work? Well, sure it can. That's because the sextant doesn't care whether the rays are curved or not. Whatever happens to them along the way, they still come into the sextant from some directions. And these directions can be represented by tangents to the light rays. So to the sextant, it seems that the star is in this direction, which is tangent to the line of sight. And the horizon seems to be in this direction, which is tangent to the line of sight as well. And so the angle between these two tangents is what the sextant will show us. And I'm stressing again, it doesn't matter what happens to the light along the way, it could do some loops for all the sextant cares. It only shows the angle between the directions from which the light is coming, which is the angle between the tangents. Okay, but that's not quite what we want for navigation. For navigation we care about this. First, the true direction to the star. That's where we would see the star if the light wasn't refracted. Second, the actual horizontal direction, that is 90 degrees from vertical. The true elevation that is useful for navigation isn't measured from the horizon, apparent or not, but from horizontal. So, this angle is what we actually want. But again, the only thing we can measure is this angle. So what do we do? Well, we apply corrections. First, this angle, which is the difference between horizontal and the apparent direction to the horizon, called the dip correction. It is tabulated in the nautical almanacs and depends on the observer height. So if we know how high we are above the sea level, we can find out what the dip angle is and subtract it from the sextant measurement. This will give us the apparent elevation of the star above horizontal. Second, this angle, which is the difference between the true direction to the star and the apparent direction, which is the tangent to the line of sight. This one is called the refraction correction. It is tabulated in the nautical almanacs as well, and it only depends on how high the star is in the sky. So if we know how high we see it, specifically what the apparent elevation above the horizontal is, but we know that after subtracting the dip correction, we can subtract this correction to know how high it actually is. So to sum up, to get the elevation angle, we take the sextant measurement, we subtract the dip correction to get the apparent elevation, then we subtract the refraction correction, and finally we get the true elevation, which we can then use for navigation. That is how it works. There are no curved adjacents, there is no need for the Earth to be flat. It all works perfectly fine on a globe, and in fact, the procedures used to turn the elevation angle into a position fix heavily depend on the fact that it is a globe. But that's a topic for another video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.